Hey guys, it's Josh with Battle Bond here. So just coming at you guys today with a old world tournament recap. So Dan and I attended a doubles tournament on May 11th and it was held just west of Edmonton. The tournament was 1250 points each and there was some interesting things about it. So the armies that were taken were basically treated as separate armies for purchasing ma magic items and all that stuff. Uh, and there was no restrictions with regards to like who could pair with who, as well as um, e each, each of the armies could use the other armies uh, general and battle standard bears, and they could also affect each other with magic. So it was basically just like grab a friend, play with your armies that you have, and get together and have some fun. So as we're scrolling through the minis, you guys can see our entire armies are 3D printed, except for Dan's Necrosphinx. And they are 3D printed from Highlands miniatures, uh, as well as one page rules. So those are what we decided to use. We thought they were good representations of everything. So this was the first tournament that either Dan or I attended for this game system. And we worked pretty hard to get our models painted up all for it, our specific list. So you guys can see the, the pictures kind of scrolling by on the video. And our list will be scrolling by as well. So uh, I'll just cover kind of what our thoughts were with regards to what we wanted to do with our lists. Our, our idea was that because uh, Dan was playing Tomb Kings and I was playing Orcs, we would use his Tomb Kings to be kind of the, the linchpin of the shooting and the magic phase for us. So Dan was doing the Mortuary Cult. And because of that, we were able to just take wizards for characters. And the main idea for shooting from him was that um, he was going to give his archers poison. And they were going to sit back and shoot. Uh, so they hit on fives regardless. And then sixes auto wound. And then he wanted to take some Ushabti with bows. Uh, as part of the core as well and that's just because they they do pretty good damage and then on top of that we I, I took a wizard as well um, so Dan had a level four and a level two and mine was a level three and then we also brought the casket which um, because of how this tournament was set up would give a bonus to both of us for our bound spells and then just for him for casting. So we each had a ruby ring to also help out with our casting. And then for my end, I just brought the the tough front line of black orcs. And then we had our my night goblins with fanatics and uh, his horse archers to do some harassing and general disturbance of the enemy line. And then uh, finally we wanted to have a good counter punch so that's where the necrosphinx and my my chariot with my black arc war boss my boar boys and his scorpion come into play so that was kind of the the general idea with this list and we were hoping it would play out we we never played any any practice games or anything like this this was all just kind of theory-ish and we just figured we'd put it on the table and see how everything went Starting with our game one, we were versus Chaos and Empire pairing. The, our opponents were Lawrence and Mike. So I guess the, the biggest thing about this list that we were playing is that the Chaos Lord was on a dragon and was basically built to be more or less unkillable. So having him on the, the dragon with Lord Nurgle the, the extra wounds makes it really tough and the, he had, the, the Lord had like a, I think it was a 3 up armor and a 5 up ward and a 5 up regen and then you reroll 6s to wound against him so pretty tough to kill but on, on the other side of things it meant that his damage output wasn't actually that big and 
it kind of showed throughout our game that we played. Like he, his dragon, spoiler alert, did kill a bunch of stuff, but for the most part, he matched, like everything that was matched up against it was pretty favorable for him. And uh, that was just a mistake on our part, like for some of the stuff that happened, how we played and how we deployed specifically, all of that. So just going into the game here, we'll just cover kind of like the, the highlights and uh, you guys can look at the pictures and obviously their, their list is scrolling by. So if you guys want to pause it at any point to have a look at what their list was, um, feel free to do that. The first scenario we played was open battle. Something I also forgot to mention is for each scenario, there was a special objective to make it so that it wasn't just completely about kill points, even though it pretty much kind of was, but um, just to add a little something extra. So for this first game, um, our special objective was we, we would pick three units before the game started, and if they were fleeing or destroyed at the end of the game, we get an extra 100 VPs for each each unit. So the three units they picked uh, to put up against us were the uh, Tomb Scorpions, or sorry, that they had to kill, were the Tomb Scorpion, um, My Giant, and the Necrosphinx. And then the three units we picked for them was their small unit, their like five-man unit of Knights, and then the two Dragon Ogre units, one, one of two and one of three. The main highlights of everything that happened in the game here, so as most war games do, uh, the first bit of the game was just like moving around and stuff. The notable exception being that the Necrosphinx tried to charge the three-man unit of Dragon Ogres, and they decided to flee. And the Sphinx tried to redirect, a redirect after that, but failed the charge. And we actually played this wrong. So you're supposed to only move the charge distance that you roll, but we added the movement of the Necrosphinx into that as well. So the, Nec the Necrosphinx, as you, if you, as you guys can see with the pictures that go by, ended up being way out on its own. And because of that, it was it was easy for our opponents to kind of get in and do their their big trick of their list to deal with him. So we'll come back to what that is. As far as the rest of our stuff goes, like it, it kind of just moved up and they they did their things. Like my goblins went up, they released their fanatics before running away from being charged. Unfortunately, the fanatics didn't do that much this game. Especially when they were first released so uh, I was really expecting them to get uh, a bunch of wounds and stuff because I, I got one through a uh, unit of dragon ogres and through the big unit of knights oh and through the the unit of forsaken but unfortunately it only did like maybe a, a couple wounds total and then <laughs> the other ones were just being avoided and such so uh, not the best but what can you do it's it's fanatics right so yeah, so the Necrosphinx ended up being charged by the big uh, night bus, the big Empire night bus, and the with that had I should say it had both wizards in it, and uh, what ended up happening is the one wizard in it had spectral doppelganger with the monster slaying sword, and he ended up getting that off, and. Uh, ended up killing blowing the sphinx so like there there's a lot of things that had to go right for that to be able to happen like he had to he had to roll high well first off get the spell off and then he had to roll high enough to get enough attacks so that he, he could get that six on the 2d6 right all all of that stuff so it's unfortunate and then the like the necros fix shouldn't have been that far up in the first place but i mean it is what it is and we <laughs> We're still pretty new to this game, so we do make a, a bunch of mistakes and stuff like that, along with everyone else at this tournament. I should say, uh, most of the people who are playing had not had very many games, if any, under their belt. So it, like, it was a really good chance for all of us to kind of learn as a, a group and see what other stuff other people could come up with. Uh, yeah, so the we lost the Necrosphinx 
pretty early on, and the the basically unkillable dragon lord came around and was able to pick his fights. Um, so because of essentially those two things, we th our our game kind of snowballed in their favor, and unfortunately we ended up losing that one pretty badly. As far as how everything else performed, like I, I was pretty happy with my Black Orcs. They were doing really well matching up against the Forsaken. The only thing is the Forsaken kept rolling AP2 for their attacks, so the 3 plus armor save on them wasn't doing as much as it could have been. Like if that wouldn't have been the case, it definitely would have been a lot better. So we, we did manage to kill the, the 3 three dragon ogre unit so we did get the extra points for that but they were able to kill all three of the units that they were gunning for with the dragon and magic from the big night bus and kind of once that that all happened that whole flank on our right side there just fell apart and it was just uh, an easy walk through for them so unfortunately yeah it was a it was a pretty crushing defeat for <laughs> our first game of the tournament but i mean it is what it is and it happens and like i said we this was just something um dan and i had come up with on the fly and we'd been working to get all these models painted for uh, the tournament and stuff. So it wasn't like we were going to change or anything like that. Yeah, talking about the game afterwards, though, I think that if we would have deployed a little bit better, so if I would have put my chariot with my, my Black Orc War Boss where the Giant and the Necro Sphinx were, and then when that Necro Sphinx got moved up as far as it did, if we would have just um, marched the Chariot and the Giant up to help support the Necro Sphinx, then I think we potentially could have had a completely different game. And honestly, it probably would have been in our favor because I think those things match up pretty well against those Knights especially. And with those those Wizards and the, the one having the one trick, right? Which doesn't even work on the Chariot. So... We, we still had a good time, and we were able to play through the our our full game on this one because uh, we took some of our, our lunch break and stuff to do it, and it was a good learning experience. Moving on to game two, we played a Chaos and Tomb King uh, pairing uh, against Evan and Kyle, and you guys will see their list will scroll by. The only thing is... Um, Evan, who was playing Chaos, didn't realize that in order to ally models, you have to basically ally a, a full kind of separate army. So you'll see in his list, it says he has an allied Necro Sphinx in there. Um, that got swapped out. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't remember what it was swapped out with. I think his um, Chaos Ogres or something. Um, yeah, so just ignore that, <laughs> that part of his list. But everything else is correct. Uh, yeah, so for this game, this next scenario we played was meeting engagement. The special objectives were we had to, we, so we were trying to get uh, units into the opponent's deployment zone for the end of the game, and we got extra points for, d depending on what kind of unit it was. So you got an extra 150 for core, an extra 100 for special or rare, and an extra 50 points if those units were infantry. And things like characters, flyers, skirmishers, ambushers, models that are single units, scouts, summon units, those all didn't count for those extra points. Getting into the game, again, just like the other one, like early on, it was just a bunch of moving and stuff. Uh, the first round, I got my Black Orc War Boss into uh, one of the Scorpions on our opponent's side and killed it overran but it wasn't far enough to get into combat again which is what i was hoping for and in the meantime the the two sets of ushabti were trading bow shots and then just like healing each other up and stuff uh, or being healed up by their respective wizards which was really funny the chaos dragon on their side was just doing a bunch of like repositioning and stuff along with the knights that were there and then eventually the uh, necro serpent riders came onto the board 
to kind of help out with that that sort of flank that was going on the <laughs> my night goblins were able to move up release their fanatics once again and again they didn't really do much just i, I think it was just a, again a couple wounds total from the three fanatics so another disappointment <laughs> my giant unfortunately didn't get to see combat for the entire game and then as far as my chariot goes so once it had finished killing that scorpion and then not running into anything else it was charged by a necrosphinx on our opponent's side and the chariot decided to flee and it rolled far enough that it, it went through my units and stuff but then he didn't rally for two rounds and this particular game ended on round three uh, to time so <laughs> Uh, he didn't even really get to do anything, unfortunately. He actually got uh, multi-charged and then ran off the board in round three. So that was, that was a pretty big disappointment because I was really hoping that I would get him in and start munching a bunch of troops because he would have been really good at that. But on the plus side, my Black Orcs were able to uh, get in with the Chaos Ogres on the other side, kill a bunch of them, and ending up uh, overrunning into the... Tomb King, Wizard on a Dragon. So I was able to tie that particular wizard up and keep keep the magic kind of contained because of that. Our, our Sphinx was able to kill the Ushapti on the other side, which was pretty nice. So there wasn't that trading back and forth anymore. Unfortunately, my Boar Boys didn't get into any combats. Again, because the, the game ended on round three because of time. And then on the, the side with the all the chaos stuff our our right hand side there um so the chaos lord which was pretty similar to the other one uh, in the the game our first game he charged into the our our uh scorpion and killed it and then overran into dan's archers and then so because of uh the Tomb King Hierophant being the one with the item that gave the archers poison. He basically ended up being in combat in all of our games and ended up being in combat pretty early on. So even though we had three wizards, it was more like we had two and at some points one and that one was usually my level three. So we actually got dominated quite a bit in the magic phase because of all of that, which is pretty unfortunate. But uh, again, it was it was a, a thing we were trying out just to see how it goes and, and just to learn from, right? Like I said, the, the game ended on round three due to time. So that kind of sucked uh, because... It ended up being uh, uh, another pretty big loss for us. It wasn't nearly as crushing as our first game, but still a pretty big loss. But if the game would have gone longer, uh, we were pretty set to make a pretty big comeback because a lot of the Chaos units were down in number. And like the Boar Boys were full and ready to, to get in and do some work and the giant hadn't done anything. The black orcs were there and were able to be in range to hold up the the dragon. And because they're equipped with great weapons, right, it's, it's easy enough for them to, to wound the dragon and stuff. So there's the potential for them to even kill it in one round uh, if we get lucky enough with it. So, like, it would have been nice to play a little longer, but because most of the people were new and stuff, things were pretty slow with regards to the games we played. And that was all of them. So I'm not complaining or anything about that. Like I said, it's just everyone's learning and lots of us are playing with stuff we've never played before. So it's just part of playing in a tournament. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, fun game. And again, learned, learned a bunch of stuff from that. And um, unfortunately, there there wasn't really anything we could carry over to our next game, but uh, it's still still a good learning learning experience from that.
Moving on to game three, we played a Bretonia Empire Alliance with Dusty and Jordan, and this was, I'd say for sure, our, our most fun game of the tournament, of the three that we had. So for this game, uh, we were playing Flank Attack, and for the special objective, there was a token in the center of the board, and at the end of each round, the team with the most non-fleeing units within six inches of the token got an extra 75 points. And if there was the same amount of units, there no one got any points is basically how it worked. So once again, the first, first little bit of the game was just moving up and kind of positioning. And Dan and I taking some shots from cannons. So... <laughs> Oh uh, man, those cannons. So one one was able to snipe Dan's battle standard bearer and another one was able to snipe through my units and get to my chariot and do uh, a couple wounds to it. But uh, luckily later on in the game, uh, even though the cannons are still poised and <laughs> sniping at characters, our uh, 6 plus ward save from the Casket of Souls actually saved my chariot twice I think. So that was, it was really nice, and it was really nice being uh, affected by uh, Dan's buff from his casket, so that was cool. So basically, I sent my goblins and black orcs up towards the middle as fast as I could to kind of deal with the stuff there, which was a unit of spears, the steam tank, and some peasants. So <laughs> my fanatics, again, didn't really do anything. They killed a few peasants, and then I, I actually sent them out against the steam tank. And I was, I was hoping to get a little lucky. I knew it was fives to wound and stuff, but they didn't even do a single wound to the steam tank, which was really unfortunate. And my wizard got kept back so far for most of the game that I, I didn't even get a chance to put Itchy Nuisance on it to help them out or anything like that, which kind of sucked, but that's okay. Uh, positioning error from the Bretonian player meant that at one point <laughs> we could snipe his wizard with our ruby rings, so we did that, and that was the only wizard on the boards on their side, so because of that we were able to pretty much dominate the magic phase, but they their fighting characters were well, characters and units were good enough that it didn't really matter that much. So, basically every round, the center was held by the Spears, the Steam Tank, and the Peasants. So, every round they were getting the extra points. And, unfortunately, like, we didn't really pick up on it quick enough and get Dan to move up his, his archers so that they could be there and just stall. Other than that, on the on so on the left hand side of us, that's the side we chose for our flanking force, and coincidentally, that was the side that our opponents chose as well for theirs. So on that side, the uh, the Necro Sphinx and the Boar Boys were able to run amok amongst crossbows and spears <laughs> and get in there, and uh, actually a cannon as well. So that they they killed all of that stuff, which was really nice and we avoided the big night bus. And my giant was able to get into combat for this game, so that was cool. But uh, unfortunately, he decided to go up against a big unit and <laughs> roll that he's just gonna attack one model. So he really killed that one model, but that was <laughs> about it for him. Yeah, and then on, on their side, the, the Pegasus Knights with the, the character in it basically went and dealt with our scouts that we put there and then came around and ended up killing my general on the chariot and the black orcs all got wiped out as well. And so what happened with that was there, there was this cool combo with the peasants which I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't know it was coming or anything like that. And I honestly, I don't know if there was really anything I could have done differently to change it. Maybe, yeah, because e even issuing a challenge, there was like four characters in that peasant unit, so even that wouldn't have mattered or anything like that. But uh, I think I killed between the black orcs and the uh, orc war boss on chariot, like 20, 20 some models in combat. But so like easily enough to win that combat and break him and all of that, but 
he his peasants had stubborn from a character that was in the unit and they also had shield wall so because of that they passed and they didn't fall back at all and that basically led to his pegasus knights being able to charge my flank for my for my general and for the uh black orcs and kind of mop them up so this game again ended due to time in round four this time and this ended up being another loss for us but the good news with this one is that the reason we lost was because we didn't commit enough to the center so the points differential basically came down to who was holding the center and because we weren't paying attention to that we we couldn't we weren't contesting it enough yeah the secondary objectives got us there so that means it was a really tight game uh for the entire time which was really fun and yeah these opponents were really great we had a really great time playing against them so that's pretty much it for the tournament so just going through some final thoughts i just wanted to give a big shout out to phil for hosting and running the event so uh the event was hosted actually at his house and he basically has like uh he, he's on a farm and he has uh, kind of like a, a barn that's set up that was set up with all the tables and everything. And I think there was 24 players total, something like that. So 12 teams, so it, it was a lot of people. But it was uh, uh, very spacious, lots of room to play and stuff. And it was a nice day too. So everything was set up outside. So during lunch we... We were able to just hang out and eat lunch, which was provided, by the way, also awesome. And then we even ended up with some cool swag. So he gave out uh, templates, acrylic templates that you guys can see here for, for um, prizes to everyone, which is cool. So if anyone's thinking about running an old world tournament, I would highly recommend something like that. Or I was thinking too, maybe like scatter or artillery dice, it's just something that everyone's going to need. So I really appreciated that too. And then as far as <laughs> what we would change about our list. So uh, it kind of sucks that the list idea didn't really pan out. But I think it's because we didn't commit fully, especially to the shooting side of things. And also because we, like we, Dan and I have only really played each other as far as the old world goes so we didn't really have that good of an idea of what other other factions could bring and what kinds of things to look out for and kind of what kind of counterplay to put into our lists so going through his i think that the archers not being skirmishers would have been way better because then they could have just volley fired and they would have ended up with more shots every game then uh, they ended up with us skirmishers anyways. So that would have been nice. And then his skirmisher cavalry <laughs> didn't really do anything. They didn't even really harass anything. So we figured that they would be good for maybe going after war machines and stuff. But because it was 1,250 points per person, that actually ends up taking up a lot of the board, especially in the deployments. So they didn't really get a good place to scout deploy ever, to be honest. So I think having the um, cavalry as just more archers probably would have been better. And then the in in that thought as well, the item that gives the archers poison should have gone onto his his battle standard bearer, who could have stayed in the unit, and then that would have freed up his level four wizard to be able to like raise skeletons once they get into combat and all of that stuff and then it also would have helped us a lot with our magic because even though we had a lot of magic we actually weren't that impactful as far as what we did with it and again that's because for all three of our games dan's archers with his level four wizard in the unit got tied up pretty early on so that that kind of just left us kind of hanging out in the wind with my level three usually trying to dispel at least one level four if not two 
So yeah, that was uh, another thing that would have been good to change. So just yeah, hard committing to that shooting idea I think would have would have been quite a bit better for us because uh, like we were both pretty happy with the performance of my orcs. Like the black orcs did what they were there to do. The <laughs> night goblins did what they were there to do: release their fanatics and then run away because no one cares and no one panics if they run. Yeah, the only thing is. is I had a magic item on my war boss that reduces enemies' leadership within six inches of him by one. And so the thought was is that would really help out with, say, like the casket doing the magic missile and stuff like that. But it literally never came into play one time. So, like, if I just swapped that out for Trollhide Trousers, that, that would have been an infinitely better item to have, I think. But as far as performance-wise... Uh, yeah, I think all of my stuff performed well and the way we wanted it to, so that was that was good for that. Yeah, so really fun tournament. We had fun opponents, fun games, and then probably my biggest piece of advice for anyone who's thinking about attending a tournament is just make sure you review the rules and, like, don't you don't have to memorize them, but make sure you have a, a good grasp of every single phase because for a couple of our games that definitely came back to bite us a little bit because we we weren't sure exactly how things were supposed to play out and we we didn't want to take the time to like look it up or deal with that just because we knew that we were all playing slow and stuff anyways so yeah make sure you review and uh <laughs> know know what your units do as well if you guys like the video, make sure you give us a like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And if you want to help us out in other ways, we do have uh, an Etsy shop that you can check out. It's etsy.com slash shop slash Battlebond Miniatures, where we sell a variety of tabletop miniatures and terrain for games like uh, Warhammer the Old World. So check us out and let us know that you guys like these videos and we'll definitely come back to you with uh, some more old world content thanks for watching